Newcastle won, PSG won, Newcastle moments away from taking three points from the Parc de France, moments away from doing the double over PSG despite going to Paris with 13 injuries and only Lewis Hall on the bench. But the referees found eight minutes of stoppage time, probably should have been five or six. And one of the softest penalties ever. And I have to say, I do feel sorry for Newcastle. I do feel sorry for Newcastle fans because you could see how hard those players were fighting. I saw some people criticising Newcastle for parking the bus. But what would you do if you'd gone to PSG with 13 injuries, had absolutely nobody on the bench, you're in this big injury crisis away from home in Europe, you were the underdogs against the superstars, you're one nil up, you just hang on, you just hang on and... I almost felt like, although PSG did miss about 50 sitters, I almost felt like Newcastle deserved to hang on because of the work rate they had. And to lose to a penalty like that, I mean, not lose, but to drop points to a penalty like that is a disgrace. We're going to talk about the penalty, the decision, how awful it is. We're going to have a little bit of a rant about VAR and how it's used in Europe, because as a United fan, I've seen some shamble thing, shambles things go against us in terms of what's Liveramento meant to do, chop of his arm. Something happened to Ericsson a couple of games ago versus Bayern. The, the, the penalty rule in Europe is a disgrace. They changed it. And then we're going to talk about Newcastle because I actually thought the sales was phenomenal. I thought Pope was absolutely brilliant man of the match today. I thought Liveramento was incredible. I thought Lewis Smiley, 17 years of age, going to PSG, absolutely didn't look out of place. I thought uh, Bruno G had a good game. I thought Almoron was really, really impressive as well. So I do want to talk about the Newcastle players, but I think we have to talk about VAR. It's going to get the most attention. I think even Sunderland fans would probably admit that Newcastle got hard done by. I mean, this, this is a disgrace. It hits his arm. Then his chest. What can he do? Do you want him to chop off his arms? I do not. I do not get. And this is as a Manchester United fan. There's no bias. I mean, I hate PSG, but there's no bias to Newcastle here. This is never a penalty. This shouldn't be given as a penalty. The fact that VAR even told the referee to check his monitor. How is that a penalty? What can the player do? You cannot be giving penalties for this or players are just going to target the arm. I hate this rule in Europe. And it is a rule in Europe where if it literally touches the arm, they'll give a penalty. If he is this close to the ball, this far away from the ball, and it comes off his body onto his arm, he can't move his arm, there's nothing he could physically do to get his arm out of the way, why are you giving that as a penalty? So like he's used his arm, but I, I don't get how that's a penalty. And I feel so sorry for Newcastle because they were, they had all these injuries. Everything was up against them. They gave 100%. They were given 1 million percent, working so hard against the PSG side that needed a dodgy penalty to get result. And this is going to be a difficult position for Newcastle because they kind of need Dortmund to do them a favour and they need to beat AC Milan. But they were so close. And if they'd have got that win, they would have been so close to getting out of the Champions League. And I don't care what team it is, whether it's Liverpool, Man City, Newcastle. I feel very strongly about this VAR rule in Europe because last season, this is what cost United. The ball hit Lissandra Martinez's leg when he blocked it, went and bounced up from his knee and hit his arm, and the Sandra Martinez gets a booking, so he's suspended, and they got a penalty against that, against Man United. And we saw Ericsson versus Bayern Munich as a Manchester United fan. The ball just goes into Ericsson's arm, he can do nothing about it, it gets headed into his arm. Like, Bayern Munich headed the ball into Ericsson's arm, and VAR will give it a penalty. These rules in Europe about what's a penalty and what's not a penalty is absolutely embarrassing for the sport. I, I'm, I feel very strongly about this. I hate it when they rule out goals for silly things, like silly pushes. I hate it when they're trying to find penalties out of nothing. I hate it when VAR intervenes. The game is played at such an intense pace. Sometimes when the ball just hits a player's arm, get over it. Don't give a penalty. Sometimes if there's a little push, give the goal. Sometimes if you have to get lines out and wait three minutes to see if it's onside or offside, give the striker the benefit of the doubt and give the goal. I hate how VR are trying to nitpick at every aspect of the sport. I feel like they're trying too hard to nitpick, ruin every aspect of the sport. And I feel really, really strongly about it. I'm fed up with VAR. I'm, obviously, I don't really care who wins between Newcastle and PSG and who goes through. But I think I don't like PSG, Newcastle, the underdogs. I felt like, yes, PSG had a 5.0 XG and missed eight big chances. And yes, that bar, what was he called? The guy that began with B, uh, bar, bar Cola, could have probably got hat trick. But Newcastle fought and fought and fought. And... They, they were unlucky. And I want to talk about my man of the match. I want to talk about someone that I thought was absolutely incredible today. And that was Nick Pope. Look at this statistic here. Goals prevented by a goalkeeper in a single UCL match since the start of last season. Only Andre Anana has done more in Porto Nilna Inter. 
1-1 between PSG and Newcastle. Nick Pope was absolutely phenomenal today. He was coming off his line so well. He made so many crucial saves. Um, there was no way he was going to save the Mbappe penalty. I mean, Mbappe scored three penalties in a World Cup final. What's a group stage game for Mbappe? But Nick Pope was absolutely phenomenal today. And he, he deserved the clean sheet. He was brilliant today. But I have to say Lascelles. Lascelles is a player that I thought was in the bin. I thought he was a championship player. I will say this. I thought, what? And, you know, I think Newcastle even thought about getting rid of the sales, but because of FFP, they couldn't bring in that centre-back. And I think Newcastle do need to bring in a centre-back because of Sven Botman's injury. They need depth there. But I, I laughed at the sales. I thought he was a banter player. I, I, not a banter player. He, he's always been a, a good servant to um, Newcastle. He's always been a decent player, but I thought he's a championship player, bottom of the Premier League sort of level player. I thought Newcastle need to move on from him. But Lascelles is a true professional. He's probably got one of the best mentalities in football. He is absolutely true professional. He was part of that sort of Steve Bruce relegation period, kind of being phased out in Newcastle. And he comes back in from Sven Botman's injury. And Lascelles has been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, Lascelles. I'm really impressed with him, particularly today. You're going up against Mbappe. You're going up against one of the most expensive teams in the world, but maybe the best player in the world. And Lascelles was phenomenal today. He looked like a leader. He looked like a captain. He didn't look like a player that deserved to be in the championship. Me and the Sam are thinking Lascelles a championship player. I'm very wrong. He's a top professional. He's an absolute top professional and he's probably good to have around the Newcastle squad. Lascelles looked fantastic today and I will hold my hand up and I'll say I was wrong about Lascelles when I said send him to the championship. I was wrong. He's been absolutely brilliant. Nick Pope was fantastic. Lascelles was fantastic. I thought Liveramento was absolutely fantastic. The run he got for the goal, I thought Liveramento, you know, he suffered a horrible ACL injury. He was out for so long. We knew how good he was from his time at Chelsea. We knew how good he was from his time at Southampton. I remember when he was balling out for Southampton, I thought, oh, yeah, you know, I should look at this guy. Then he got this injury and Newcastle kind of took the risk for, on him. But he's been brilliant. He's been absolutely brilliant, Liveramento. That drive for the goal, he defended well. He didn't put a foot wrong and he couldn't have done anything for the penalty. So I think Liveramento and Nick Pope and the cells were fantastic. I think Shaw and Trippier were fantastic. I think that whole Newcastle backline to defend like that, to defend as a unit, were fantastic. And you know what? If I was a Newcastle fan, I would say, look, if I went into the game as a Newcastle fan, I'd want a draw. I'd be disappointed because of the penalty, because of the way the match sort of panned out. But if I'm a Newcastle fan, I'd be happy because your team gave 110%. Your team tried. They worked as hard as they could. They gave 110, 120%. They did not give up. You had 17-year-old Lewis Miley on the pitch. You had 13 players missing going into that game. You only had Lewis Hall on the bench that could realistically come on. You've gone to Paris. You've already played at the weekend against Chelsea. You've got no players. You're depleted. You're up against at PSG, the stadium. And you, you, the players went there and they gave 110%. They almost got three points. They got a 5-2 aggregate versus PSG in two games. They outworked PSG. They did not stop running. They did not stop trying. Miguel Almoron was absolutely everywhere. The only negative I can say is maybe PSG could have scored a few and maybe Newcastle got lucky, but I'd say Nick Pope was brilliant and that PSG didn't take their chances and PSG weren't good enough. You could maybe be critical of Isaac in the second half. His ability to keep the ball and hold up the ball in the second half was poor, but... I will say, looking if they had Callum Wilson, it'd be a bit different. I think Isaac's a fantastic player, but hold up, strength needs to work on. But I know what Isaac's come out from a long injury. He probably shouldn't be playing two times a week, but Newcastle haven't got a choice. I think maybe that's the only criticism. Maybe Isaac looked a little bit lazy in the second half, but what could Newcastle do? They couldn't take him off. He's just come back from an injury. Newcastle went into that game given 110%. They were trying. They were giving everything. Nick Pope, Almer on the cells. Liveramento were absolutely phenomenal. They were pressing well. They were working well. The only negative you can say is, look, they were pinned back that last 30 minutes. They were holding on for dear life that last 30 minutes. They couldn't keep a hold of the ball. But what was Eddie Howe meant to do? All, they had to park the bus. They were one nil up. They had all these injuries. They couldn't make a substitution. They had to park the bus. PSG had about a billion pound on the bench. So I, I look at it and I say the Newcastle couldn't have done much more. And I think... If I was a Newcastle fan, I'd just be so happy that you've got a squad that is just there, that wants to be there, that's given 100% for your manager no matter what. You've got a 17-year-old in there. And the interesting thing um, that I've seen going around Twitter is this, and, and it says in their guidelines for next season, the board recommends that UEFA should clarify that no handball offence should be called on a player if the ball was previously affected from his own body, in particular when the ball does not go towards the goal. And if I'm Newcastle, I do look at this and go, look... You can still get out of the Champions League group. You're unlucky, VR's a disgrace, but you can go home knowing that your team gave 110%. 
Your team gave 120%. Your team gave everything. You And they frustrated PSG. PSG were crying at the ref for a penalty twice. PSG were crying. They were whinging at the penalty, at the ref for a penalty twice, three times. PSG were moaning. They were whinging. They were doing everything they could because they couldn't get the ball in the back of the net until that penalty. 96 minutes they held on. So fair play to Newcastle. And look, I hope that Dortmund do something against PSG because I hate PSG. I think they're one of the worst teams out there. I think the fan base has spoiled. The players have spoiled. But yeah, smash a like, smash a subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow with an Arsenal review. See you then. Bye.